Hello everyone, welcome to Legally Bound Business and Real Estate Explained. Dylan Dennis, a mixed martial arts artist, has been engaging in a war of words with YouTuber Logan Paul, leading up to their scheduled boxing match on October the 14th. As part of his promotional tactics, Dennis has taken the personal digs at Paul, including posting inappropriate edits and pictures of Paul's fiance, Nina Agdal, on social media platforms. The situation escalated when Dennis reposted pictures of Agdal's past relationships and made derogatory comments. This has generated strong reactions from fans and has even led to speculation that the fight might be cancelled. Logan Paul's response to Dennis's actions has been swift and legal. According to reports, Paul has explored legal avenues to restrain Dennis from mentioning his fiance and has possibly sent a legal notice to cease and desist to him. This move by Paul has been seen as a defense of his image and as a strong stance against personal attacks. The legal question surrounding Dylan Dennis's reposting of pictures and comments about Nina Agdal is whether it constitutes defamation. Now, to prove defamation, certain elements must be met, including false statements, intent to harm, and actual damages to reputation. But here is the problem that Logan Paul faces. Number one truth as a defense. Defamation requires a statement to be false. In this case, Dennis's posts may have been inappropriate or distasteful, but if the pictures and comments were based on actual events, like Nina Agdal dating Leonardo DiCaprio and various other celebrities, then they cannot by definition be false. The truth, even if presented in an unflattering manner, is generally a defense against defamation. Number two, public figures and opinion. Celebrities like Logan Paul, Nina Agdal, and Dylan Dennis are considered public figures. In defamation cases involving public figures, the plaintiff must prove that the defendant acted with, quote, actual malice, unquote. This means that the defendant knew the information was false or acted with reckless disregard for its truth or falsity. The landmark case of New York Times Co. v. Sullivan established this standard courts often recognize a broader latitude for opinions and statements about public figures, especially in contexts like entertainment and sports promotion. Dennis' post could be seen as part of a rough and tumble world of fight promotion where exaggerated claims and personal digs are often part of the course. Number three, the context of Dennis's post is essential. They were made in the build-up to a boxing match, a setting known for trash talk and psychological warfare. The intent behind the post could be argued as an attempt to promote the fight rather than a malicious intent to harm Agdal or Paul's reputation. The legal standard for intent in defamation cases is high, and proving malicious intent may be challenging in this context. For defamation claims to succeed, there must be demonstrable damage to the reputation of the person targeted. In this case, it would be necessary to prove that Agdal or Paul's reputation suffered actual harm as a direct result of Dennis's posts. Given the public nature of the celebrity feuds and the common use of trash talk in promoting fights, establishing a direct link between the posts and reputational damage might be difficult. Finally, Dennis's comments and reposting may fall under the category of opinion or criticism, which are protected forms of speech under the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. So, while Dylan Dennis's actions may be seen as inappropriate or offensive by some, the legal argument for defamation appears to be weak. The post may fall under the protection of free speech, especially given the context of the promotional campaign for a boxing match. The elements required to prove defamation, false statements, intent to harm, and actual damages to reputation may not be sufficiently met in this case. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights like these. Thank you for watching.